Hey, y'all. Happy Saturday. I hope that y'all are either resting or out shopping or eating or doing um, whatever it is, some things, if you wanted to do some things, but had to wait till the weekend, um, whatever it is, I hope y'all are out doing it. Um, how y'all doing this Saturday morning? You know, it's my anniversary weekend. So I took off today and tomorrow and me and Corey were going to spend all day together. Now, look, I said there's some more things, you know, that we still wanted to do around the house that we haven't been doing just because we both just been going, going, going. So I was like, uh, like his back room, I painted it a green, right? We loved it. But then I was kind of thinking like, what if we painted it white, like make it brighter back there? I mentioned it to him. He don't remember. He was like, no, nah, I like it. I like it. It's like, okay. And then I mentioned it to him last week because, you know, when you know your person, I was like, I'm going to mention it again. So I mentioned it again. And he was like, yeah, I was thinking it could be a little brighter. So I was like, all right, well, instead of doing the roll painting, because, listen, we painted this whole house when we moved in. Um, can we use your paint sprayer, like, for the room? And he was like, yeah, we just got to cover the, make sure we cover the carpet, cover everything in the room, and you can do it, right? It just takes a lot of setup, but we could do it. He was like, you want to do that on our anniversary weekend? I was like, well, our anniversary is Sunday, so on Saturday... I wouldn't mind doing it. And I was like, to make it fun, let's just be naked and do it then. Not saying that we have to do anything right then, but it would be fun. You know what I mean? Just make it something different than your normal painting. And then, y'all, we paid somebody to clean the garage two years ago. It is back looking like, and I know that he wants to clean it too. So he was like, I was going to do that this weekend, but with our anniversary, I was like, no, I can help you do that too. Now that we're not going to do naked because we're going to have the garage door open and I don't need no HOA violations, child, all that. I don't need those type problems. But um, he ended up, so then we, because I, we were going to spend the whole day together. So like wake up, go to the gym, because we both go to the gym, but we go different times. So one thing we do whenever we go away somewhere is we always find a hotel with a glass shower, because I love a glass shower. And, um, and we have one in this house, which was one of the selling points for me. We bought it, our mat, our, Prime, the primary bedroom, glass shower. But anyway, we always make sure the hotel has a glass shower and a gym so we can go work out together, even on vacation, because we don't get to do it during the week and it's something that we like to do. So I was like, okay, we can get up, work out early, go work out, go to breakfast. Um, Even though I don't like eating sweaty, I would still go, go to like IHOP or whatever. Even though, you know, y'all know my IHOP don't have grits no more. It pisses me off. And then come home, do something, just spend all day together. Cause it's funny. It's like, it'll be 23 years tomorrow. And the longer we're married, it's like the longer we like spending time together. And I'm not saying we didn't like spending time together before because we did. And he's always wanted to do things together. Always. Like that's, that's one thing I was truly blessed with, with him. Like he wants to make sure we're together. You know, he, he just really likes that. So um, we were going to do that, but he ended up having to work this morning. Um, his manager asked him to, and, and his job, when I tell you, they've been so like good to him or whatever. So he asked me, what do you think? And I was like, it's, you know what? I may work too, then you can go ahead and do it. And it's not like all day, hopefully or whatever. So we'll see. And then my, one of my closest friends, he's like my sister, she has four, well, one pass uh, last year, um, RIP uh, to um, her. She had four sisters and a old, and a brother. And so basically like we're, me and Corey are in with their, like we love not just my friend and her husband and her kids, but her extended family. Like, so, and um. It's interesting because our anniversary is September 15th. Our friend's birthday, my girlfriend, because um, me and Corey are friends with her and her husband, her birthday is September 15th. So every year for years, we've done a birth anniversary, like around that time. Um, but anyway, her sister, her birthday is today. So for one day, they're the same age, her birthday. So my friend, Tammy, shout out to Tammy, her birthday is September 15th. And her sister, Nini, shout out to Nini, her birthday is the 14th. So she's having a woman's uh, get together today for the ladies. And then the husbands or the partners, whoever is with, we're going to go do something. But because him and I were going to spend all day together, I RSVP, no. And let me tell you, Nini throws the best get to, like, I always say she needs to be a professional, just somebody who like, 
a professional party person down to like the food, the way she sets it up, the plateware, the silver, the glasses, all that. Anyway, um, so she was having a thing at her house today for the ladies and the men were going somewhere. But I RSVP no, because I thought that Corey and I were going to be spending all day together. But now that he has to work a little bit, he's working now. Um, her party's from, I think, 11 to 4. So I'm going to try to stop by. But then I got into the cleaning frenzy. So I'm cleaning, clean, you know, I'm like doing stuff that I really want to do because I thought maybe I'll go to work. Then I'm like, nope, do some videos. I need to catch up and record for RHOC. And then because I still I didn't do last week, even though I watched or, or the week before, but I did. And I watched this week, but I'm like deep cleaning, like stuff that I've been wanting to do. So I told her I was going to stop by while he was at work. So I'm really going to try. Yeah, I got to put on this face mask. OK, last thing. Cause it's been a couple minutes, but I'm sick of TikTok shop. They got me twice. So I tried that, that bio, whatever mask where you can sleep on it and you wake up. I was like, Oh, okay. It's okay. The next day, uh, Corey was like, you still glowing. And my skin normally is pretty good. Anyway, he always compliments me on my skin, but he, I woke up that next morning and he was like, you still glowing. Well, I got the collagen one this time that helps minimize pores and all of that. You can wear it overnight. I wouldn't wear it overnight again um, just because, I don't know. But this one, I saw a black woman do a review and she wore hers for an hour and a half. So I was like, if I can throw it on, like I should have been throwing it on this morning, but I ran out and then I got home and I said I was going to record right away, but I didn't. I was cleaning when I could have been wearing my mask the whole time. So anyway, if y'all have seen those masks on TikTok, I'm going to do one maybe for like two hours because you're supposed to let it, it starts out white and then it, soaks into your skin then I'm trying to debate should I just wait and do one tonight and maybe go ahead and sleep in this second one even though I don't want to I don't know but I'm gonna do the mask and report back to y'all like I said the other one it did okay I took pictures and I deleted them I was like mm -mm. but Corey was like wow your skin is still glowing the next morning even after washing it and everything so did I wash it yeah no maybe I didn't but anyway it was just still there but Anyway, enough of that. Y'all didn't come here for all of that. Um, let's get in. This is going to be a short video after me telling y'all all about my weekend and plans and what I'm about to do. Let's get into this video. First up, don't make me call Portia. I love the way Nini does her lips. Don't make me call Portia. I can't even do it. This is according to Us Weekly. RHOA's Portia Williams prevails over ex Simon Guabadia in prenup battle. The Real Housewives of Atlanta's Portia Williams has won a legal battle in her ongoing divorce proceedings with ex Simon Guabadia. A Fulton County, Georgia court ruled on Thursday, September 12th, that Williams, 43, and Guabadia's prenuptial agreement is empirically fair after Guabadia, 60, tried to contest its enforceability. According to court documents obtained by Us Weekly, the main purpose of the prenup, which Williams and Guabadia signed prior to their 2022 wedding, was to avoid contested and expensive litigation, including the costly and potentially intrusive discovery process. So let's read that again. According to court documents obtained by Us Weekly, the main purpose of the prenup, the main purpose, which Williams and Guabadi assigned prior to their 2022 wedding, was to avoid contested and expensive litigation including the costly and potentially intrusive discovery process in the event of a divorce. Williams legal team cited the prenup when arguing against Guabadia subpoenaing Williams and her employer, True Entertainment, LLC, for materials dating back three years. Williams lawyers argued that because the prenup has not been deemed unenforceable, the court should not allow any discovery of materials whatsoever or limit discovery to requests that are immediately relevant to determining the enforceability of the prenup. The court agreed with Williams' argument, denying Guabadia's emergency motion to compel mandatory and additional discovery. So basically, they argued that the main purpose of the prenup was to lay out that if we get divorced, we're not going to have a long, drawn-out divorce. There's not going to be intrusive discovery, and we're going to go by what's in the prenup. That was the point of the prenup, and now he's doing the opposite. Guabadia previously claimed that when he signed the prenup, he was under the impression that Williams intended to be a homemaker and stay-at-home mom during their marriage. He argued that Williams' desire to return to reality TV or other employment constitutes a non-disclosure of material fact and misrepresentation, which renders the prenup unenforceable. 
The court disagreed with Quabadia on Thursday, noting that Williams' future employment plans are not mentioned whatsoever in the ex's prenup and that Williams has been a reality TV celebrity for years, which was well known to Quabadia when he signed the agreement. The documents also note that Williams and Quabadia negotiated the agreement for over one year beginning in November 2021 and ruled that there is no evidence to support that fraud, duress, mistake, representation, or non-disclosure of material facts took place during negotiations. Us Weekly has reached out to Williams and Guabadia for comment. So listen, regardless of whether you like Portia, don't like Portia, feel like you married him, her, feel like Portia married Tom and for money. This has always been my thing. If you wrote a prenup, if you sat down, because they had a, they did the prenup a year before they were married, right? That's what it said. So if they did a prenup, took the time to go out, lay over everything, have lawyers look at it, all of that, and we both agreed, unless something came out that showed the prenup was signed under duress, it was fraudulent somehow. Like I frauded my way into the marriage and into this prenup. Unless something like that came up, it is his fault to agree to all the things like letting her have the house, letting her have the car. You did that in a prenup. I think that Simon knew that he would possibly not win in court. What I think he wants is to exhaust Portia's resources and then her not be able to fight it anymore. Like, I feel like he's like, oh, you want to, Okay, cool. You just gonna spend your money. We gonna run them them billable hours up, boo. Cause I got it, and I don't know if you got all of it. you got the time and money to continue to be in court. She's spending up a lot of money to fight this. I think that Simon knew. He was like, "We gonna run it up." Oh well, I got the money. Um, like I said, you signed the prenup. It wasn't under duress. The whole point of the prenup in your prenup stating that you wouldn't have to go through all this. And now you are, which is why it tells me that Simon was like, mm, OK, so that's a victory for Portia. So I wonder now going forward if the divorce is going to proceed like. Because he was fighting it. And trying to do the discovery. So one, so now that that's all out of the window, it seems like. Are they just going to go ahead and be able to proceed and get the divorce and she get everything in the prenup? I have a question. And I don't know if it's because I've been smelling bleach all morning. That my brain, I don't know. So y'all let me know. If you're getting a divorce, if you're getting married and you sign a prenup, right? And Simon has this $7 million home. Did he pay it all because I know that he sold one home and used that towards this house. Did he pay it all completely off? And that's why in the prenup it said she would get the house. Or is it his name is on the loan, but her name and his name is on the deed, so he can't he couldn't kick her out. So in the prenup, they're like, you if if we divorce, you get the house, and then she would just have to what make up the mortgage payments. I'm not sure how that works. Like me and my husband are with our house. His name is on the loan, but mine and his name is on the title. So technically I'm not financially responsible for the house, but he can't put me out. But so let's say we had a prenup. The house is not paid off. So what would the prenup be saying that I could stay in the house and I would just have to assume the payments or or he would have to pay for it? That's what I'm not understanding. If she's staying in this house, is the house paid off? Or does, or does her getting the house mean that he has to continue the monthly mortgage payments? Like, can y'all tell me how that works? Because I would think it's easier for me to understand, oh, if it's paid off, if he bought it out, right? And in the prenup, you say, okay, so if we get divorced, you get the home. And it's already paid for. So how, how does that work if there's a mortgage still on the home and the loan is only in one person's name? Does the person have to assume like try to get it in their name. Do they, okay, you can keep the house, but you have a certain amount of time to get it in your name, obtain financing. Like, how does that work? I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think though. 
about the judge's ruling. Do y'all think it's fair because they did hash out this prenup again almost a year of a year before they got married? And do y'all think Simon drug it out on purpose? All right, y'all. Now I'm gonna share my screen. Share my world. I love Mary. I don't even know where that came from, but all right. Let's look. Let's look at this. Would you look at this? Would you look at this? This woman, this is her show. This is her happiness. This is love. This is peace. This is prosperity. I love you. You are, look at, just look at her. Come on, nephew. And guess what? Only you can touch her. You let somebody else touch her, I might go back. But no, all jokes aside, I know you are going back. The party, baby. back to serve out the you rest of your beautiful. time. Let me showcase you. Step to the side real quick. Woo! Do it turn around. Woo! Can you do it 360? No, do it 720. 720. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. And I want everybody to say. We love you, Jen, on the count of three. One, two, three. We love you, Jen! And baby, God loves you, but I love you more. DJ, take us out. I feel like calling you love. So the person says, congratulations. So in the caption, shout out to the Bravo Shade Room. Congratulations, Jennifer Williams and Christian got married in Paris. So is this a party after their wedding? Is this the reception? Because I don't see, and, I, and after they actually got married. Or is this the before, the celebration the night before? But it's saying that they got married. So it says, congratulations. Um, and the person that was coming up the step said, congratulations. But you know, you can say that if it's before the wedding and you're having a party before your wedding, people are gonna be saying congratulations. So either way, I thought that was funny when when the, whoever said the good news is only you can touch her. And he was like, if anybody else touch her, I'll have to go back. And they were like, no, you don't want that. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. You are after this, you're going right back. Because for those of you that may not know, and I was gonna talk about it. I don't think I did, but basically, they were in Paris before. He didn't get permission from his probation officer. He wasn't supposed to leave the country. He did. So he got arrested in court. What, last week or the week before? The judge, so he stayed some days in court. The judge was letting him out in time to get married. And then he's got to come back and serve out the rest. Now, I heard 15 days and I heard 30 days, but I've heard more 15 days. So I guess he's got to serve out the rest of his time. So, sir, you are indeed going back after um, this. Shout out to them. Congratulations. Look, I mean, I hope that we're all wrong. I hope that we are all wrong. And it turns out that Jennifer um, did not marry a scammer. I mean, one can hope. Let me know what y'all think. Next up, my girl, Candace Dillard Bassett says on RHOP exit, she didn't feel safe. Let's play the audio. Hello, divas and dolls. This is Blake Newby. Uh-uh, not the whole thing. Recording. It was, it had its moment. Mm -hmm. Hold on, y'all. I thought I just had to clip. Now what? Yeah, I'm so annoyed right now because I thought it was gonna go. Hello, divas and dolls. This okay, is Blake no. Newby and welcome. Knock it right well. I'm just gonna have to read it to y'all what y'all said. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, cause I would have queued it up so it could have been that part been ready. I can put the link in the description box. But basically, this is what she said. She and uh, give me one second. Okay. Recently, Candace was a guest on the court, a guest on the According to Blake podcast and opened up about why she d decided to leave RHOP. Candace, why you ain't called me yet? Now, granted, I haven't reached out. The last time I reached out was like three years ago and your manager wanted all this information from me. 
Anyway, you in the DMV, girl, you hit me up. After six seasons of Delicious Reads, Candace was prepared to exit after certain people who worked on the production crew made her feel unsafe. She also didn't want to bring her baby into the environment created by reality TV. Then Candace threw in a quote from Tamar Braxton, who famously only wants beef with the devil. Candace said, I can't be beefing with the devil, talent, and the people whose job it is to protect us. And I started to just not feel safe. Plus, there was a deeper motive for Candace. When Giselle accused her husband of making her uncomfortable, Candace confronted the camera people and producers, smashing the fourth wall. At this time, Candace was attempting IVF, and she blamed these events for the failure of her first egg retrieval. So, yeah, she said that she didn't feel safe. I want to see something, y'all. Maybe I can find just that piece of the audio because I thought that it was going to go right there. Up, oh, yeah. All right. Let's share again. All right, hold on, y'all. Very clear that Robin was fired. She admitted to it. Oh, yes, she did. Yes. And there were petitions. That I there were petitions. Okay, so that was my question. Can you left? Yes. You left the show? Yes. She left. That let's, we've cleared that up. Yes. What was it that was it the baby that made you yes. say, okay, that you couldn't do it? That is the only reason. I was ready to go mm -hmm. halfway through season eight. So many things were going on, not just on camera with the cast, but behind the scenes. I can't be in battle with talent and production. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Mm -hmm. Like, to, uh, Tamar Braxton says all the time, I only want to have beef with the devil. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can't be beefing with the devil, talent, and the people whose job it is to protect mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And I started to just not feel safe. This is not a slight at Bravo directly, but there were people at our production company who contributed to me just not feeling safe. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. Pregnant or not, I was ready to go. But definitely when we decided that we were going to do an embryo implantation, because yeah. I did do IVF, yeah. I knew that it was not a safe space for me. Yeah. My first egg retrieval failed because yeah. I was going through that process at the same time that the allegations about Chris making... Yeah, that girl feel uncomfortable yeah. Yeah. came that all happened at the same time and my egg retrieval failed well it was very clear that robin was fired she admitted to it oh yes she did yes and there were petitions that i was. there were petitions okay so that was my question can you left yeah. all right, i just wanted to play that part again because she says it was very clear that robin was we missed that the first time it was very clear that robin was fired and Candace said, oh, yes, and, and tried to allude to that uh, Candace was fired. I will say I did hear someone say that they heard from a source that Candace did leave on her own. She wasn't fired. However, that she had kind of got a, she had kind of got word that it was like. Either you leave or they're not going to renew. Like basically giving you the heads up, they're not going to renew you. Where, you know, Rob, whereas Robin was going to come back and she was told, hey, we're not, you're not coming back. But Candace maybe got the one up and told them first before they had a chance. So who knows? Andy, I believe, said that she was welcome back or what have you. I watched the trailer and I wanted to talk about it, but I wanted to play it so we could watch it together. Maybe I see I would have had to do probably something like that on Patreon. Maybe I'll start because I do have a Patreon, but maybe I. I Start, trying to provide content over there too between that the podcast youtube but it's gonna work but um maybe i'll start doing that because i wanted to watch it with y'all um it was missing something to me yes it was light it wasn't dark if you will but it just felt like 
there was something that it was missing, a little bit of seasoning that it was missing. That's what I felt like. It was kind of lackluster, you know. But anyway, um, listen, shout out to Candace. For because we don't know, we can only go by what a source said or a source heard. So who knows? Maybe they were going to ask her back. However, shout out to her for recognizing that the environment wasn't good for her or her pregnancy. And I do believe that Candace is one of the few housewives that did exactly what you're supposed to do with this podcast. I mean, with uh, that platform, she got on there. She got her singing career off the ground. Her acting, she's still acting, still in stuff. Uh, so. I believe she's in on a show on BET, all black, BET's all black. So she's doing her thing. So shout out to her. It's nice when a housewife can leave and still eat off of the platform that they've built in other projects, you know? Um, and, if, and if they want to be, because there's nothing wrong with wanting to be famous, wanting to be a public figure. There's nothing wrong with that. And so shout out to her for still being able to do that. Um based off of the different things that she got to do because she was on this platform. So congratulations to her and Chris again on the baby boy that they're having and all those things. And shout out to Cardi B. Cardi had her baby girl, I believe. So congratulations to her. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Do y'all believe that um, Candace either left the show on her own or maybe got the heads up that it was going to happen. So she got the jump on them. Uh, I did that at a job before. <laughs> the manager has spent the whole day in her office writing all this stuff, writing all this stuff that she perceived I did. But guess what? I had already found another job. She pulled me back. Can we talk? Sure. So when she started, I said, I don't want to, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just want to let you know, I'm putting in my two weeks face deflated, baby. Oh, that, that moment was so good. Uh-huh. Cause I already know. Oh, she made me sick. Anyway. So <laughs> y'all let me know if y'all feel like Candace got the jump. Um, and are y'all happy that either happy that she's not going to be there this season or y'all interested in the season, seeing what it's going to be like without her in the mix. And what did y'all think of the trailer? Um, y'all let me know. Also, let me know what y'all think about Miss Jen, Jennifer. And I wonder, did any of the basketball wives ladies go? Basketball wife, basket, did any other ladies that she on the show with, did they attend the wedding? And y'all let me know what y'all think about Portia. Um, winning uh well prevailing over simon guabadia in the prenup battle y'all let me know what y'all think i will talk to y'all later i love y'all so much see ya